It's me, it's Benny Van Hal. How you doing? Uh, it's not actually, it's Dr. Benji, but for this challenge, I'm Benny Van Hal. So I think you already know what I'm going to be doing. I'm bravely going to put a favourite team as Liverpool. But let's get straight into the challenge. So I'm going to try and resurrect Manchester United. On this game, it says they're predicted to finish third. This is on the update, so we're doing the current season uh, as you're watching it live now. Hopefully, we can get back into the Champions League. That's the goal. Anything better than that would be great. After a uh, seventh place finish last time out, they need to improve, don't they? So it's up to me to get this this mess back on the road. Uh, they've got quite a few new signings, obviously, on this update database. They've already got Herrera, but apart from that, they've not got that much more. Luke Shaw, who's not a well, he's not he's not the finished article, is he? Seventeen years old, got a lot of work to do. So let's see if we can uh, bring in a few players. And I'll let you know how that goes. So then, there's a time for a few big decisions, and I'll let you know the transfers I made. First of all, Wayne Rooney as captain. Darren Fletcher as his understudy. They've been around for quite a while, so I figured they were the best two candidates for the job. The squad is currently looking like this. A few of them were on international duty, but let's see what we got up to, shall we? Let's go through a few of the transfers. So if we go to the history, uh, we'll look at the outs first. So on the outs, Nani, Rafael, uh, Antonio Valencia, and Anderson went for money. The rest were loan deals. 41.1 million for four of those players that I didn't really need, didn't fit the system. Uh, apart from Raphael, who did fit the system, but I sold him for 17 million. As you can see on the other side, I bought Seamus Coleman for 17 million. So we spent 53 million pounds on four players that I think are the four players that will make this team a little bit a little bit better. Uh, Vertonghen is the first one. Centre-back, left-footed, exactly what this team lack. Experience to 49 Belgium caps, uh, well, as of it's probably more now in real life isn't it but as far as the game's concerned 49 on about 100 grand a week so on quite a big wage but the transfer negotiation went perfectly well so i'm very happy with him and he can play left back if needs be you'll notice that i didn't bring in another left back because i figure that he can play there and the next player was a bit a bit surprising you might think tiago motta central midfielder bit of a destroyer in the middle tackling stats very good plays on the left side he's basically a good version of fellaini i've decided but fellaini will probably start more games so we'll see how that pans out uh, the next one, Seamus Coleman, 17 million for Seamus Coleman. The perfect right back, the stamina and natural fitness to get up and down. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be playing overlapped. Uh, I'll show you the tactics straight after this, see what we're looking at. But yeah, I was really pleased. Even for 17 million, delighted. And then Hector Moreno, though his star rating's not particularly good, another left back, uh, another centre back cover, sorry, who's left footed. Because if Vertonghen ends up having to play out on the left, then we're going to need another centre back to fill in. So the squad looks like this. We'll look at tactics, actually. So this, the tactics are looking a little bit like this. We're going to play... We're not going to do the Van Hal 5 thing. We're going to play 4-2-3-1, but with a, a narrow kind of shape to it. So we've got Shaw and Coleman at the back, both really really athletic. Um, I'm sticking with Phil Jones. I think Phil Jones is actually a really good defender on this game. So I think him and Vertonghen will be excellent. De Gea in goal, uh, ahead of Lingard, obviously. Then we've got Herrera as a deep line midfield next to Fellaini. But we've got quite a lot... If you look at the midfielders we've got... We can change that round. Carrick, Fletcher, uh, Motta, as, as we've signed. Cleverly, if, unless he goes out, which he may well do. Uh, th that seems to be how we're looking with that. Uh, and then we move further forward. Kagawa, Mata and Rooney. The reason Mata is the Czech Batista is because his work rate isn't quite as good as my two advanced playmakers. Rarely do I play with two advanced playmakers, but I think it'll work. And up top... We've got Robin, uh, Robin, <laughs> Robin Van Persie. Robin Van Persie playing as an advanced forward. Just going to be the figurehead. Uh, a bit did come in for Hernandez from Juventus. I think it was for about 14 million. But I like having him and Welbeck as kind of second strikers. Also, if it comes a time when we need to play a little bit wider, I can play Zaha on the right uh, or Yanazai or Ashley Young and Welbeck on the left as well as the other players mentioned. So there's quite a lot of fluidity. The team actually isn't that bad. I think we look at it and we go, ooh. United have got a bit of a dodgy team, but in actual fact, they're not that bad at all. I just think Van Hal's trying to play a system with them that isn't necessarily suiting the players that he's got available. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, you'll notice that Rojo isn't on this. He hasn't signed. Neither did Di Maria. So we're doing it pre that moment. And I didn't go for Di Maria because he wasn't interested, funnily enough. <laughs> anyway, with same possession, short passing, work ball into box, hustle opponents, play wider, and look for the overlap. Because our formation's quite narrow as it is, I thought playing wider might give us a little bit more width, a little bit more sort of variety in our attacks uh, defensively we should be quite strong these four here are going to be vital to it so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to play through we're just at the start of the season now i'm going to play through seven or eight games and we'll see how we've got on after those first seven or eight games so then seven or eight games have been completed eight league games and a couple of league uh, league cup games which i'll show you in a second in terms of the premier league 
10th place. Not particularly good, but it's been a funny season. Man City having a rough time, Newcastle, Tottenham, a really tough time. Uh, but we're not that far away from the top four places. Currently occupied by Aston Villa. Palace are doing particularly well as well. It's a bizarre start to the season. Uh, so let's see how we've got on in terms of our squad. Yanazai has been our top performer. I'll show you the, uh, the system we've switched to in a minute, and that'll kind of reveal why he's had such a good season. Uh, I've been playing Rooney as the main striker, and Vertonghen's come in and done an admirable job. A few of the underperformers, uh, Mata picked up a knock early on, so he's not been playing particularly well. Neither is Robin Van Persie, and I will explain that move too. So let's look at the tactics, shall we, before we get onto the results. Uh, so we've changed it. As you may remember, we were playing this formation. We're now playing this formation. I brought Wilfred Zahar in. Despite not being particularly well-rounded, he's pacey. And I let a lot of my other wingers go because they were kind of surplus to requirements. I didn't plan on playing the system. Uh, so we've changed a few things around. In fact, I, I switched that to standard more often than not. And it's going very average. It's going very, very average indeed. The team is looking good in some games and particularly dodgy in others. So let's look at the fixtures. Uh, we started off really badly. Lost to Hull. Then we drew with West Ham. We won against Sheffield Wednesday in the League Cup. Then another loss to uh, Sunderland. Then we managed to beat Arsenal. So it's funny. The, the tougher games we've fared a little bit better in than the games we should win. Uh, then again, we beat Swansea City 4-1. That game went quite well. Rooney grabbing a double in that one. Another League Cup win. We're playing quite a strong side in the League Cup because we don't have Champions League or European football to worry about. We can kind of experiment. Uh, the most interesting game that we played was undoubtedly against Everton. They went 3-0 up and then 71 minutes, uh, Yanazai grabs one and then a 92... Uh, 92 90 second? 90 second. That's what I'm trying to say. 90 second minute equaliser uh, with Rain Rooney getting the goal in between. So that was classic Manchester United fighting back after being 3-0 down heartbreak for the Evertonians we then got a, a decent draw against Chelsea we were far and away the better teams probably should have finished it but didn't and then we've just drew 1-1 uh, with West Brom so we'll go forward another eight or so games we'll see how we're getting on and I'll see you in a second and we're back okay the first bit of news is the fact Manchester City have sacked Pellegrini which they are in 13th so fair enough we're not that much better four points ahead and it's been a little bit, do you know what, it's not been that bad, but it's been uninspiring. I think that's how I'd describe it. So as, as we have a little look through, the last time you saw me, I think it was after the West Brom game. Yeah. Uh, since then, we played Burnley twice and beat them twice, once in the league, once in the cup. Uh, we then got a draw against Leicester, which was disappointing. Winning against Palace, winning against Newcastle, and things were looking pretty good. I thought, oh, here we go. That, that let us like have a continued unbeaten run, and I was enjoying that. Then we played Tottenham City and Liverpool, and it all fell apart a little bit against Tottenham. Luke Shaw got sent off relatively early, got booked and then sent off back to back. So that was a bit of a kick in the teeth, despite having maybe not the best of the game, but we had more chances. Saldado scored a free kick. That was a frustrating moment. And then against City, uh, things were looking a little bit better. We Once again, it was a very even game. We had a bit more of the ball in that game away from home. So that was good. And, but you see, you haven't had that good a season. So maybe that's a disappointing result too. And then we've just lost 1-0 to Liverpool, which I'm kind of bittersweet about. Herrera got injured early on, and that sort of, sort of set the tone. Once again, quite an even game. They had more of the ball. We had quite a few chances. But disappointing, really. Um, the formation's changed a little bit since we last spoke. I've decided to start playing with one attacker, two wide men, with a defensive midfielder, just because we were getting overrun in games, and it was costing us. So I decided to give us a little bit more defensive solidity. I'm either playing uh, Motta or Fellaini there. Now I'm going to have to replace Herrera for a few games. So we'll take him out and we'll bring in hmm, Michael Carrick, calming influence. I think we'll go with that. And we'll play Rooney instead of Van Persie. And we'll see how we get on. So we'll see you again in a few days' time. Well, seconds. How time flies when you're having fun. So we're back at it. We've done pretty well. Since you last spoke, we've been on quite the run. Let me show you the form. So the last game you saw us, it was the Liverpool game. We lost 1-0. And since then... We've won every single Premier League game, which has put us right back in contention. Fair enough, the games weren't as difficult as they might have been. The highlight of the whole uh, the whole run was actually the Capital One Cup victory against our local rivals, Manchester City. That was a 3-0 win. Wilfred Zaha has been surprisingly good for me. And one matter, we'll come on to him in a second, has been a revelation. So, last time he joined us, uh, Yanisai was leading the way in terms of average rating. There was a few other familiar faces, but Juan Mata was quite low down. Not anymore. He's had a terrific run of games. He's got eight goals, uh, nine assists with 17 key passes. That's kind of the thing I look for. Looking at key passes, Rooney, Van Persie and Mata all putting in a shift. Kagawa not too far behind. Sadly, he's out with an injury right now. 
But things have gone really, really well. If you look at the league table, it's very, very close. Arsenal leading the way on 43 points, and we're in the we're in the mix. There are four. There's three. Sorry, three teams tied on 39 points. Us, Tottenham, and Everton, which is kind of maybe what you expect. City's still languishing a little bit, but we're in the mix. Uh, what I'll do is I will join you after the Capital One Cup final. So that's the next time I'll see you. Then we'll have the last run of fixtures, and then we'll see how we've got on. Have we qualified for the Champions League? That was the aim, remember. So that Carlin Cup final, I was on about... Oh. So we didn't make the Carlin Cup final. That was a little bit of an oversight on my part. And so what we'll talk about is what's happened since the last time we met. I just want to focus on David De Gea. I've not spoken about him at all during this save. But he's been really good for me. 14 clean sheets, the second highest amount of clean sheets in the division. And him and his defence have been really good. So let's focus on the main man in the defence. A man that we actually brought in. When you look at key headers and key tackles, Vertonghen is right up there. He's also chipped in with a fair few amount of goals. 38 appearances overall. He's been an absolutely brilliant buy. Easily the best buy I've made. Aside from that, the other buyers I made, Seamus Coleman has done okay actually recently. I'll show you the form. The form's been very good. Recently in the game against uh, Leicester, Seamus Coleman had a chance at a hat-trick. And he blew it. Missed the penalty. to get. They gave it to him. They went, go on Seamus, have a go. And he bottled it. But elsewhere, Thiago Motta. Now that seems like a really poor bit of business by me. I didn't play him. I didn't. I ended up not needing him. Uh, five appearances for two point uh, for two million on seventy k a week. Bit of a waste of money, really. Shouldn't have done that. So you know, a mistake. Also, covering defender Moreno, just haven't needed him. It's just one of those situations where Vertonghen's been fit and played really well. So I've had no point needed to bring him in. A bit Coleman and Vertonghen have both had decent seasons. So if you look at the form, the form's been really good. I think the last time you met was around the the, uh, the the Capital One Cup game in the semi-final. And since then, we've been on a really good run. Well, no. It's a patchy run of form. We lost to Arsenal, Chelsea and Crystal Palace. Obviously, two of those games are kind of understandable. The Palace game, what a mess that was. I don't even want to talk about it. And in the FA Cup, we're progressing nicely. Obviously, not in Europe, so we can focus heavily on the Cups. We did decently in the, uh, in the Capital One Cup. And in the league, we are on 55 points. Three points ahead of Tottenham, who have got a game in hand. And three points behind Liverpool, uh, who have scored a similar amount of goals to us. So, things are looking quite good. We've now got the run in. Eight games remain. I will join you at the end of the eight games. Let's see if we've done it. So then, here we are. One match remaining of the Premier League season. And it's tight at the top. You can see Chelsea and Liverpool tied on 74 points. We've got Manchester United on 68 points. Arsenal on 67 and Tottenham on 66. So it's all to play for. Uh, before we get into it, though, let's look at a few of the key guys of our season so far. So Juan Mata has worked his way into the top assists. Uh, Robin Van Persie, 19 goals so far this season. So he's been brilliant. Actually, he'll, he'll end on that number because he's out for the final game. I think I'm going to play Rooney against Stoke City. And David De Gea, 15 clean sheets. Uh, sixth, uh, fourth highest. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Fourth highest. Uh, amount of clean sheets in the league so we've got one game to go the form coming into this game has been quite good we've won our last two games to put us right in the mix losses against Tottenham and Liverpool I was worried that it was going to become difficult and then we lost to Leicester and it was a three game run that was really not fun to play uh, but a draw against QPR wins against Southampton and Aston Villa have set us up for the final game against Stoke now I wasn't going to do this and it will make the video a little bit longer but let's play it let's see where we come let's make sure we get into the top four and is the team set to how I want it? Van Persie and Luke Shaw are out, so Vertonghen will be at left back and Rooney will be up front. Behind Mata playing as a Czech Batista. It's been quite a good season, I think, by all accounts. It's been quite good. It could have gone a little bit better, but to be third going to the last game of the season, not too shabby. So, well, let's get into it, shall we? Stoke have got some... Oh, Victor Moses, terrifying. How are we going to cope with that? So play our game and we'll win. Oh, they didn't like that so much. Uh, let's give him the old treatment. Pressure's off. They're not bothered by any of this. Finally, someone reacted. Good. So are we good? Oh, hang on. That's a bit quick. So let's keep the highlights relatively quick. Uh, we won't play the goal we plays, but we'll go from here. So, can we do it? We best get out the league table. Should we not? Let's hope we can get through. So we'll keep the top half up. So oh, City are clawing their way back into the top six. And about time too. Michael Carrick, Yanazai. He's been a really good player for me, actually. Oh, I could say from Bukovic. Yanazai surprised me. I, I didn't intend to start the season playing him particularly, uh, but he's coming to the team and he's been good when called upon. And that's all you can ask for. He's actually Drayton's been very good indeed. So if we were going to go into a second season, which we're not, uh, then he would have been a key member of the squad. Actually, this gives me a good chance. If you have got a. Ch this was Challenge Tuesday. If you've got a Challenge Tuesday, uh, leave it in the comments. I'll be taking all the suggestions. I'll pick three of them 
and I'll put them up for a vote and in my streams on uh, Twitch TV for uh, Twitch TV for slash Doctor Benji or on Twitter, we'll vote on which we think will be the best one to do that week, and I will do it that weekend and upload it next Tuesday. So leave your suggestions in the comments section below. Now then, are we going to be able to do this? In our first challenge Tuesday, we don't want it to be an anti-climax. We're still in third place. Everton have, have cooped above Tottenham, which is good for us because that suggests Tottenham aren't winning. Not much going on in that first half. Let's see if we can keep up the performance. It's okay. Away from home, a nil-nil. Uh, if we can, see, oh, if we if we lose, I think we'll be tied, won't we, with Arsenal and Everton? But our goal difference is relatively good. As Janzai swings in towards the back post, headed back in. Oh, Chester. And now Ness is going to bring it away. But it has been difficult. There were times at the start of the season when I wasn't sure which formation to play. Finally, I've settled on a... On, well, we had variations, different variations. That's not going to count. Variations on a 4-2-3-1. And I've ended up playing kind of a defensive midfield role and two wide men and then Van Persie up top. And as you can see from the goal-scoring figures, he was excellent. Oh, Mamadou, he played against... Uh, he played for Manchester United, didn't he, in the past? But they let him go. I think he went to Germany and then he came back to Stoke. So as things stand... We're going to do it. It looks like Tottenham have put in a bit of a performance. So if we slip up now, that could be heartbreaking. Victor Moses, well, you can always rely on him to get your top four finish. And there it is. We've done it. So the challenge is complete. And that is the end of this week's Challenge Tuesday. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been relatively successful. A third place finish. I'm sure Manchester United fans would be very happy with that come the end of the season. Very, very close at the end. But we got there. So uh, from me, Dr. Benji, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.